Jennifer, it's such an incredible honor sitting here with you today. Thank you so much. You're an award-winning documentary filmmaker. Why did you fall in love with the genre of filmmaking or storytelling? You know, when I was uh, growing up, I always loved theater and I loved film, and I thought nothing ever moves people like film moves people. So if you can capture people's emotions, and then use that to tell a story they've never seen, you can change the world. If you can run a household, children, husband, dogs, you can run the world. You are in love with someone, but there's no possibility for you being with them. Did you really think no one would get hurt? You know, you shifted uh, slightly from your documentaries. Yes. And um, this is your first feature film. The film, The Tale, is based on my memoir. It's based on what happened to me growing up and my search as an adult to figure it out, understand it, and understand the stories I told myself to survive. There's a lot of fictionalization in order to make a story, but it's based on the truth. It's based on my diaries from when I was 13. It's based on the tale that I wrote about this relationship I had with a track coach uh, and handed into English class. So, I mean, for me, it was a fascinating journey to try to understand why I had always called this a relationship when so clearly it was traumatic. Jennifer, sweetheart, I found a story that you wrote in English class. Where'd you find it? What matters is what it says. It was actually your mom that came across these stories that you had written. It really took 30, almost 30 years for me to understand and be able to accept how really damaging the event was. And then um, your decision to bring it to life and to bring it to the big screen here today. For me, that's a decision that I really wanted to show the complexity of child sexual abuse, that it's not what the media portrays it, it's not black and white, it's very nuanced. A child can love his or her abuser, and people don't understand that. They want to talk in terms of good and evil, but in reality, it's much more gray. How did you select the cast for this for this film? Oh man, I am so blessed. Uh, Laura Dern read this script and she herself has experienced her own trauma and loved it. And she actually signed up for the film a year and a half before we had financing. And then Common, she brought Common on board, uh, Jason Ritter, Elizabeth Debicki, Ellen Burstyn, and in fact, the film was just nominated for two Emmy Awards, one for Best Lead Actress. Congratulations. Thank you, and Best Film, so we're going to the Emmys. I've met two very special people. Bill is an excellent coach. Tony, do you trust me? Mrs. G was the most beautiful woman I had ever met. It's not your first time, of course, working in South Africa. Absolutely not. Why, why did you choose specifically to come here with the tip? So I spent on and off five years in South Africa and I love this country. It's so complex and there's so much going on. It's very exciting, but it's also a country that is struggling like the whole world with issues of trauma and sexual abuse. Absolutely. And I felt like my story, which is about a white affluent middle-class American would be so useful to tell South Africans it happens everywhere. It can happen to anybody in every country, and it does, it's an epidemic. So let's talk about it about us, not about South African problem. How do we fight the scourge of abuse? You're so special. You know, I have a lot of regrets. Why are you so angry? Why are you not angry? I'm a filmmaker, but I can say one of the things I've seen in South Africa is a kind of very old school where you shame the survivor rather than embrace them and support them and look at their strength, you make them bad. What did you do? What did you do wrong? And so I think we have to look at children and really take care of them and be sensitive to the trauma they've been through and really help to support them. We all create ourselves out of the events that happen to us, our family, our culture, and how we spin these stories to ourselves in our minds. Do you feel that your movie is a voice? I think the tale can help people articulate, oh, I see myself. And I've seen it with women, I've seen it with men also who have been abused. But I do wanna say, nobody should force a person to talk until they're ready. I really don't think there's one solution to child sexual abuse. Yeah. You've, you've told the story, you've bring it to life. People are flocking here to watch your film. Yes. 
How do you p feel personally, though? I'm so excited. I'm so thrilled because when you make a fiction film on a subject like this, the first thing you see, you think is, it's too tough. People are going to run. They're never going to want to watch it. And instead, the film came out at Sundance this year and was the talk of the festival. So that fear went to, oh my God, the world is ready. Do you feel somewhat relieved that your story is out? You know, I'm still dealing with the layers of it, and that's so interesting. I think making the film was certainly a way to face all sorts of things that I had never understood. Um, but I think trauma never completely goes away. It becomes part of you. It's, you know, the scar on my arm that makes me me. Trying to tell anyone. It's all secret. I'm trying to figure out why. You deceived yourself. Are you telling the story, Jenny? It's my life! Mine! You don't know what's about to happen. Well, Jennifer, it was such an honor and an incredible pleasure chatting to you today. Thank you for sharing your story and your extreme talent uh, with us here in South Africa. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to bring to the tale here. All the very best. Can I have a hug? The tale will be screened on a local television platform from the 8th of August if you'd like to see the full movie. Speaking of movies, we take a look at what's new and exciting at your local cinemas on the other side of this break.